And we're seeing the problems on college campuses increase. And it's a great, great worry because the college students are our future. And we see that among many college students and among many college professors, support for Israel is very difficult today. I wrote my book, The Case for Israel, because a student came to me and said, I feel embarrassed. He asked me for chuba during the Aseret Yimei Chuba, the 10 days of repentance. He said, I can't give you chuba. I don't even know you. He said, I need chuba. I need repentance because I feel guilty. I never speak out on behalf of Israel in my classes. And I said, why not? And he was embarrassed and he said, because nobody will go out with me if I do. Nobody will be my friend. It's not popular to be a Zionist on campus today. Well, I started a campaign in Harvard, support Israel, date a Zionist tonight. It worked, you know, for some of the kids, but it doesn't solve the general problem. It's so important that we bring Israel alive on the campuses, that we tell students who believe in the environment that Israel is the most environmentally sensitive country in the world. Within five years, Israel plans to have a grid in which electric cars will run all through the country. It's now exporting that technology to Singapore. It's exporting that technology all over the world. Um, I read you from a, a new book uh, called Startup Nation, which I recommend very strongly, which was quoted in Newsweek magazine a couple of weeks ago. Here's what it says. How does Israel, with fewer people in the state of New Jersey, no natural resources, and hostile nations all around, produce more tech companies listed on the NASDAQ than all of Europe, Japan, South Korea, India, and China combined? How does Israel attract, per person, 30 times as much venture capital as Europe and more than twice the flow to American companies? How does it produce for its size the most cutting-edge technology startups in the world? Our young people have to come to understand this, that Israel is a great blessing. It is a light unto the world. If only the world would stop trying to blow out the candle and let themselves be warmed by its heat. And just at the time that Israel is facing this perfect storm, we're seeing great division within the pro-Israel community. We're seeing the development of new organizations and new lobby groups in Washington. That's just what the Jewish organization, this is what the Jews in America need, yet another organization, top-heavy organization, that will divide uh, our approach in Washington. And it's a very serious problem because we have a new administration in Washington and we don't know precisely what the administration's view on these matters is going to be. It's very important as we all know here tonight, we've all said this, Israel can never become a dividing issue between Republicans and Democrats. Israel must always become an issue on which there is a national consensus in Congress and in the presidency. And it's very important that that consensus remain, that the consensus remain among religious groups, that the consensus remain among conservatives and liberals. Jews can't be identified with only one wing of any particular party or one wing of any particular ideology. We must make sure that support for Israel transcends ideologies, transcends religions, transcends political parties. But we don't know what the future holds in Washington. We must continue to press hard we have contributed more, the Jewish community, the pro-Israel community per capita in this country than many, many other groups. We have earned our right to be active in politics. We have earned our right to insist that our voice be heard and let no one be cowed by that terrible book by Walton Mearsheimer attacking the Jewish lobby. We are strong. We should remain strong. I will never be satisfied until the pro-Israel lobby is in fact the strongest lobby in Washington. It deserves to be. And nobody need be ashamed that we are using our political, our economic, our moral power to the best of our ability to achieve a result which is right. We are on the right side of history. We are on the right side of morality. We are on the right side of politics. We are on the right side of diplomacy. We are on the right side of the war against terrorism. And we must be proud of the side we were on and never shirk our responsibility. Because we have a deal. Everybody in this room has made a deal with the Israeli government. The deal is a very simple one. 
Their children go to war. Their children go to the discotheques that get blown up. Their children stand in harm's way. Our children go to colleges and universities and work for hedge funds and do all the wonderful things that Americans do and do so well. But the deal is they put their children's lives in harm's way and our part of the deal is we must support Israel. We must stand united behind Israel. Anybody in this room who wants to change that deal is free to do so. Make Aliyah, go to Israel, and then your obligations will change. But as long as you call yourselves pro-Israel, and as long as you remain in this country, you have an obligation to stand with us, to stand together with this wonderful organization. And as we approach the Hanukkah season, and I agree with the Council General, my mother, who is a very, very Orthodox Jew, always said this, miracles are wonderful, but don't count on them. <laughs> You've got to make your own miracles. And it was more than two millennia ago that David, in writing the Psalms, reminded us, Hashem oz liamo yitain, Hashem yuvarech atamo b'shalom. God will first give you strength, oz, and only then will you be able to have peace. Peace will come only if Israel retains its qualitative military edge over all the combined Arab and Muslim armies in the world. That is absolutely essential, not only to Israel's survival, but to peace in the area. That's why if you love peace, if you love environmentalism, if you love feminism, if you love so many of the issues, and this is a great feminist organization, founded by women, led by women, supported by so many women and men, but we are playing an auxiliary role here tonight to the many women who have put this organization uh, together. Anybody who loves these values has to stand behind Israel. And so I'm here tonight to work with you, to stand with you, to lend my words of support to you. Keep fighting for Israel. Keep doing the right thing. Become a role model for your own children. And the young people, I just want to say one word to you. I had the privilege of posing with a couple of hundred of you earlier uh, tonight. You are our future. Never let your professors bully you. Never let them push you around. A new form of McCarthyism is alive and well on many colleges and universities where students are threatened with being downgraded, students are threatened with letters of recommendation being withheld, students are threatened with discipline, students are threatened with all kind of peer pressure to not support Israel. Do not give in to that pressure. Stand up, stand up strong. Call this organization. We will help you, you will help us. We will stand united and we will prevail. Thank you very much. <laughs>